Hi, my name's Daniel Beranger, and I'm here to give you a status report on the Libvert project covering the past year. Since the start of this calendar year, we've released uh, nine, nine versions of the Libvert project, and we're on course to do our usual 11 releases by the end of the year. We have a regular monthly release schedule, except for the start of the year when we um, have two releases six weeks apart. We've had um, 144 contributors to the releases this year, and of those 144, 87 of them have been new contributors to the project who haven't submitted any code before this calendar year. The releases comprise 4,100 commits, and we estimate that by the end of this year, um, if the current rate continues, we'll have up to 5,200. About 450 of those commits were sent by brand new contributors to the project. Those stats may sound great, um, but it's useful to look at them in historical context to see whether they were getting better or worse than the previous years. So if we take this graph of contrib contributions to the LibVert project since it started in 2005, we can see a, a good healthy growth in the project for the first five or six years. And then it's kind of leveled out a bit at between 4,000 and 5,000 commits per year. We can see that the vast majority of the commits are from um, so-called old authors. These are people who've been contributing to Libvert for more than one year. And then we have a fairly consistent number of commits from new authors, which are people who um, have been contributing for less than one year. If we now look at the breakdown of the authors instead of the breakdown of commits, we can see there's a generally a fairly even split between the long-term contributors and the new contributors. Last year, um, Looking at this graph uh, for 2019, we saw a dip in the new contributors for the for the um, four years between 2015 and 2019. It's uh, good to see that this year the number of new contributors has picked up dramatically, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about why that might be later in the presentation. Now the Libvert project comprises multiple Git repositories and it might be interesting to see what the breakdown is for the different Git repositories. So first we'll look at just the core Libvert library. This is um, the main C library and the Libvert daemon, which is where the bulk of the project code lives. And we can see there's not much difference in the split between new and old contributors. Um, versus the previous slide. It's, uh, there's still a fairly fairly even split, and we can see there's a, a marked increase in the number of new contributors this year, which is, which is great to see after a few years of declining contributors. We're kind of back up towards our, our peak. And then if we look at the other Git repositories, this is principally the language bindings to the main C library we can see there's, there's, there's a bit more variation from year to year. Um, but again, we've got a, a growth in new contributors this year. Um, we're not up at the level where we were a few years ago, but this is, this is to be expected because most of the language bindings um, are fairly mature. Once, once they've got full API coverage, then the, the activity tends to cut, tail off. So this is, this is kind of to be expected to a large degree. So what's happened in the project in the past year? First of all, we've adopted gitlab.com as the primary project infrastructure. This means moving the Git repositories off the libvert.org server onto GitLab. The issue trackers have moved off the Red Hat Bugzilla onto GitLab. The main libvert website is now populated based on uh, CI jobs running in GitLab. And the, uh, the main CI for, for testing the builds and unit tests of Libvert has moved off the CentOS Jenkins into GitLab. So as you can see, the vast majority of the project infrastructure is now using GitLab 
as its uh, platform. In, in switching to GitLab, we've also adopted a merge request workflow for a number of the repositories. We rolled this out gradually, and uh, this now covers all of the repositories except for the main libvirt git repository. So all of the language bindings in particular are using the merge request workflow, and this replaces the traditional email-based workflow that we've used um, prior to this, this year. The main libvirt.git repository will switch at a later date, um, hopefully in the not too distant future. The translation platform that libvirt uses has also changed. The uh, Zanata project that libvirt used to use was abandoned by its maintainers. And so Fedora adopted the weblate translation system. And since libvirt outsources its translations to the Fedora translation team, uh, we've adopted weblate as well. This has a nice property of integrating directly with GitLab. So whenever new translations come in, it opens merge requests on GitLab. And as a result, we now get um, accurate author attribution in the commits for translations as well. A big focus of the past year has been tackling technical debt. One of the most notable things has been the conversion of the build system to Mison. This means we've eliminated the majority of shell, m4, make, autoconf, and automake code from the project. As well as being a nicer build system to um, read and write, the Mison build system has uh, led to a dramatic speed up in the build time for libvirt. On, my, on one of my development servers, the, the old automake based system would take around three minutes to do a complete build of libvirt. And now with the adoption of Mison, we've pretty much cut that in half to one and a half minutes. So that makes a big difference to developer productivity. The vast majority of the build scripts have been converted to Python 3. We've got a little bit of Perl code left, but the majority has been converted to Python. And support for Python 2 has been dropped at the same time. We adopted the glib project. And um, in doing so, we managed to remove the GNU lib code, which was a prerequisite for adopting Mison. We've also converted the, a large portion of our website documentation to the um, restructured text format. And we've also converted the manual pages to restructured text. In adopting the glib library, we have um, changed our memory management approach. We now use an abort on out of memory um, paradigm and use the glib allocation functions. We've also adopted use of the GCC or CLang um, extensions for automatic memory cleanup. Um, combined, these, these changes lead to um, code flow that's much easier to follow. We've got fewer memory leaks, and overall the code is more robust. Now, looking at some of the big changes in the virtualization drivers, we have um, Refactor the block device code in the QMU driver quite significantly. We now use the modern block dev approach to configuring QMU disks instead of the legacy drive approach. And this has an immediate benefit for all applications using libvirt because they are transparently switched to the new block dev approach. And one of the notable things that this unlocks is support for new uh, checkpoint or backup APIs in libvirt. The other thing we have enabled is support for firmware image auto selection, which is useful when configuring UEFI firmware in libvirt. We've introduced support for vertio FS, which is a modern alternative to the 9P file system pass through. And we've got NIC teaming for a failover between, um, between PCI between assigned PCI devices and emulated NICs, uh, which allows you to do live migration um, when you have PCI device assignment for NICs. In the secondary drivers, uh, we've introduced support for NAT with IPv6 in our virtual network. 
we've removed the old HAL device driver, which was it's been obsolete on Linux for a long time, and uh, we have kept it around for FreeBSD, but now we've uh, removed it entirely. And UDEV is our preferred device driver. We also have support for the creation of mediated devices, which goes along with support for mediated devices in the QMU driver. In the other hypervisor drivers, we have introduced support for QMU command line pass through in the Zen driver. The Beehive driver for FreeBSD has gained support for many more configuration options. We've got uh, new active contributions for the Hyper-V driver, which has uh, been looking for a maintainer for quite a number of years now. And the VirtualBox driver has been updated to the um, 6.0 release APIs, um, and support for the older VirtualBox releases has been discontinued. <clears throat> and that uh, is a good overall summary of the work that's gone on in the last year. Um, the, the technical debt and modernization of the, of the code is an ongoing effort um, that will continue into the next year. And um, we think this is, is leading to um, very nice improvements in the maintainability of Libvirt and uh, making it a more attractive project for contributors to participate in. And uh, that concludes my presentation for today.